Hi, I'm Jack Barnes, President and CEO of People's United Bank. I'm here in the center of Westport, a city many cultural institutions and successful artists call home. People's United Bank is proud to support the communities where we live and work. That's why we're supporting CPTV and the many Connecticut cultural treasures they will be featuring over the coming months. Look for stories each week featuring cultural treasures in your neighborhood. The Yale Peabody Museum of Natural History in New Haven, Connecticut has a long and fascinating history. The visitor experience begins outside on the lawn with a stroll through a garden composed of rare plants and tree specimens, a Cretaceous landscape from 70 million years ago. A trackway of mysterious three-toed dinosaur footprints leads to the life-size bronze sculpture by Michael Anderson of a Taurosaurus, first named by Peabody scientist O.C. Marsh. Here, art and imagination dramatize a world no humans have ever seen. The fields of science and medicine were just emerging at the turn of the 19th century when Yale hired its first professor of science, Benjamin Silliman. Minerals and rocks were Professor Silliman's focus. One in particular, the Western meteorite, made him famous. The first recorded meteorite fall and recovery in the New World occurred in 1807, and it was recovered from Weston, Connecticut. And one of Silliman's more famous scientific contributions was the actual study of that particular meteorite. And it was Silliman's mineral collection that really formed the foundation of the Peabody collection that we see today. A half a century later, budding paleontologist O.C. Marsh persuaded his uncle George Peabody who had built his fortune in London by specializing in stocks and investments in an expanding America to build Yale College, a museum of natural history. The Great Hall of Dinosaurs was designed to house O.C. Marsh's historic collection of dinosaurs and other fossil vertebrates. And it's dominated by the 80-foot skeleton of the Brontosaurus. Today, we know that the name Brontosaurus is no longer used by scientists. We use the name Apatosaurus for that particular skeleton. But that was the skeleton that put essentially the Peabody on the map. And it is the only place in the world where you can see an actual skeleton of quote unquote Brontosaurus. In 1942, the museum's director hired Rudolf Zallinger, then a senior in the Yale School of Fine Arts, to paint the Age of Reptiles, a 110-foot-long mural for the Great Hall of Dinosaurs that took five years to complete. This colorful, imaginary landscape is the world's largest natural history mural. It shows 300 million years of plant and animal evolution. When the mural was completed in the late 1940s, it then became very popular and very famous, and in fact, Life magazine used the image of the study for the mural in their The World We Live In series. Zallinger then created a second mural, The Age of Mammals, for the Hall of Mammalian Evolution. So the mastodon you can see on display was first discovered in 1872 on a farm west of the Hudson River. And it's pretty phenomenal to think that as recent as 10,000 years ago, giant sloths, saber-toothed cats, and elephants, like this mastodon, were roaming North America. Near the mastodon is our ground sloth skeleton. And what's particularly exciting about that skeleton is the fact that it has preserved skin and actually hair and is still part of the skeleton. The Peabody Museum is famous for its dioramas, including several on the plant and animal ecology of Connecticut. The exceptionally talented team of James Perry Wilson and Ralph Morrill created scenes of astonishing realism. One of the dioramas on the third floor is the Connecticut Shoreline Diorama, and it's one of the most spectacular dioramas we feature. And it features the shore, the marsh, and an adjacent farm. And the artistry of that particular mural, the mixture of art and science to produce that, is really phenomenal and is really a landmark in diorama creation. Wilson and Morrill's Forest Margin presents a mid-October day in Cornwall Hollow, Litchfield County. It is a kaleidoscope of color as shorter days and diminished sunlight change the chemistry of leaves, all captured with breathtaking fidelity. In the Gallery of Human Evolution, we trace our own human story 
starting about seven million years ago with the very first hominins that evolved in Africa, all the way up through Homo erectus, the Neanderthals, and all of the other members of our family to the present day in our species Homo sapiens. The very popular Hall of Ancient Egypt features a reconstructed tomb. And within the tomb, visitors can see an actual sarcophagus, which contained the actual mummy that Peabody still has in its collections. The Hall of Connecticut Birds includes more than 300 of the 382 documented species living in our state. What is displayed at the Peabody Museum is a small portion of its vast collections. Storage areas bulging with fascination await scholars and future displays. Our collections total 13 million specimens and always growing. The collections of natural history museums truly form the foundation of our understanding of the natural world. And collections like those at the Peabody are an important part of that foundation. The Yale Peabody Museum of Natural History is an internationally significant repository of natural and human history. The experience of rare fascination at this museum brings us closer to nature, closer to the prehistoric world, and closer to aspects of our own distinct Connecticut environment. Funding for Connecticut's cultural treasures is provided by CPTV, Connecticut Tourism, the State Historic Preservation Office, Melinda and Paul Sullivan, and People's United Bank, What Know How Can Do.